every parent's happiness is to see their kids survive, is to see their kid uh, excel in life, is to see their kid be disciplined. But on the contrary, for me, my parents, I don't know whether they know I do, whether I do YouTube or not, but my happiness has always been to wake up and watch myself. You see, that's me from the village. I'm accompanied by Enoch, so we are leaving the village uh, to Nairobi city, the capital city of Kenya. Yeah, I'm somewhere at the corner. You see me? So that's my happiness. What's your happiness? How do you seek pleasures? You know, I seek pleasures by doing this. My name is Go See Africa. I'm a traveler and a YouTuber from Kenya, Africa. So, what I do? Amazing. Where are you watching me from? Are you subscribed to my channel? So let me show you the outside. The outside a bit. Well, we're gonna open it. It's not opening up. It's locked or something? So that is the outside. Let's have a discussion. What makes you happy? Let me talk about how I end up, ended up being a YouTuber, being a traveler. I could travel. I learned that from a long time ago that I could travel. And then time I'm traveling, I liked taking videos and pictures. Then at the same time, COVID happened. So I started watching African Tigers and another guy by the name Go Black. Yeah, Go Black, Africa. So I learned, oh, so all these videos I usually take and post them on WhatsApp status, post them on Facebook, I can as well post them on YouTube and grow a brand. So I started doing that. God willing, um, I met African Tigers. I did a video requesting her for a collab, which she agreed to collaborate with me. And that's why I'm here is Go See Africa. <laughs> and if you wanna do well on this YouTube space, you need to just be free. The call videos, just free, the way you are. You wake up, show us what you are doing. Show us um, what's happening around. Don't take it that serious. Don't be that serious. I know someone watches me and they want to grow a brand as well. You're asking yourself, how can I be go see Africa? You can't be me, but you can be like me. Yeah? <laughs> Yeah, so we all have different, uh, say, affinities. Yeah. What excites you? For me, I travel a lot. I'm excited by money and women. <laughs> so I want to be taking breakfast. So what is for breakfast? There's something for breakfast. Then some fruit. And uh, I'll be meeting a Nigerian, a lady Nigerian, who is a successful business lady in Kenya. 
So I wanna let her tell us the trick. Coming to Kenya as a foreigner and succeeding here. We have been living here. I've never got an idea to do business, but she's living in Kenya, living in Naptown, and living a good life. That matter. So I'll be engaging her for her to tell us more on the tree. Yeah? Is Kenya that hospitable as you think? You know? I might be happy in Kenya, my country, thinking that my country is that good. Yeah? Without involving foreigners and getting to know what they think about our country and what is the trick to succeed in this country, Kenya. Cheers. Enjoy with me. <laughs> so if you have been so keen, anytime I'm heading either to Mombasa or I'm heading to the village, I like using the train. So this is somewhere in Kapiti Plains. An area which was mostly occupied by wild animals. But times are changing. Now we have some human houses there. How many residences there? So, how do you replace a wild animal? I really don't support that. So I always watch myself so often. Anytime I have the opportunity. Anytime I'm free, I don't say when I'm idle because I'm never idle. Heading to the village of Mombasa, I don't prefer using public transport, the matatus. If you dare that, then expect to have all kinds of animals with you in the same vehicle <laughs> yeah from goats to chicken yeah people of all sorts of characters kinds of characters you know and cheap um is expensive you know you want cheap life then expect uh to pay for the same differently you know I would rather pay a lot, but I have my space. Mm -hmm. I have the comfort I need. My mind is full of wishes. I wish we were living in the times of Zinjatropos. The times Zinjatropos never had to wake up thinking about money, never woke up thinking about girlfriend never woke up thinking about making wealth and all they had to do is um, have somewhere to rest probably a good cave but times are changing we are evolving though I don't think we are, we, we are evolving anymore I haven't seen anyone grow wings. We see we're walking um, with our two legs. I haven't seen anyone start walking like animals. But in Kenya, this country is funny. There is an evolution of some big people, that, some massive people some extra tall people it's not the normal physique we used to yeah you find guys are in town and all they doing is filming someone because someone is a giant and they proudly calling themselves giants so <laughs> I think we're going back instead of Evolving. What is the opposite of evolving? Instead of um, being more modern, we are going to our old ways. 
we're starting to behave funny instead of looking for permanent jobs for big jobs instead of looking for white collar jobs now we're going to the streets and telling our people subscribe to our channel <laughs> and that's why i'm here instead of um you know we all have degrees bachelor's degree but instead of bearing on our education bearing on our career we are focusing on growing a name being famous what is that so today i'll be taking you around the rich neighborhoods of nairobi to be specific i mean um, lovington so i'll be accompanied by shabby from the black geo and i hope you guys are going to enjoy uh, spending the day with us uh, we shall be showing you the surrounding the neighborhood and uh, basically all the activities we're going to be engaging in so my name is Gosi Africa I'm a traveler and a youtuber from Kenya Africa I'm taking a stroll around uh, the rich neighborhoods of Nairobi this is one of the biggest neighborhood we have where the rich men of this city live in you know Le Levington and uh you see there is a construction there then the road seems so busy at this point they don't allow public transport so any vehicle you ever see here it's either a personal vehicle or those kind of trucks there we have uh, the border border the bikes you know covid by they taught us a lot it helped us uh, appreciate technology now we are people who are earning living strictly through deliveries online deliveries you book something then they come and deliver yeah so some guys here are not good or you can find someone can easily um, approach you and grab your camera so anytime you walk you need to be very careful the hood is very safe the place is very safe but we always have uh, those few guys who always uh, visit they pay the a visit especially those guys with a motorbike they can always uh, uh, walk through, through the areas in that no one restricts them from coming to this place then they hear purposely to pick your stuff so anytime I'm doing this I'm extra careful there's a guy who came uh, who just passed on my right I even thought uh, he was up to picking my stuff hi you're beautiful yeah. can you have a job we work for you too. We need, we need your stuff. Oh, yes, thank you. Hi. I love She's beautiful, stuff. right? Where you from, baby? Oh, I'm from Kenya. Oh my God, that's what I'm talking about. Kenyan woman. This is a new age Kenyan woman. This is a new. I'm sorry. This is a new age Kenyan woman. Go see Africa. This is Go see Africa. One of the biggest YouTubers. My name is the Black Geo. We need the Black Geo. Okay. We have a business here in Kenya. It's called the Black Geo. Journalism, entertainment, creativity. Also based in Harlem, New York City. So we shoot in Harlem and New York and Nairobi. How do you feel about that? That's cool. Yeah, so yeah. tell me about your platform, please. Oh, I'm Hadassa. Yes. I'm a content creator on Instagram. That's I what do we need. Makeup. Look at that. Uh, I love your vibe. Yeah. Thank you. I'm serious. I saw, Thank we, you. We don't, don't think that we was like tracking you, but we were walking up. I was like, <laughs> we was like all right, go home. We're going we to try to track this one, man. You're going to target this one. Thank you. Know? you. Yes. Yeah, that's, I basically do fashion, makeup, okay. hair. And anyway. also, if it's at you, Adasa, I'm going to find you. Yeah. You're going to give us an Instagram before you leave, trust yeah, me. So we can, we're going to put this, we're going to write it down on the, uh, in, your, in the Instagram. Must tag you. I mean, in the TV. Oh, man. This is all on TV, too, YouTube. Yes, do you also do YouTube? Uh, I started, but okay. it's kind of, it's a little much. It's, it's a little do you know he's a, he, he actually coaches people for YouTube? Really? He trains people. He actually they brought me back in the YouTube space. He, tra he trains, he trains, uh, uh, you know, I'll content see. creators. Uh, you you're filming with your uh, phone? Huh? We actually have a studio here called the Black Geo Studios. Yeah. So tell oh, about the Black Geo Studios. Yeah. 
That's I know so we so happy to meet you, so don't think we so hype. Yeah. It's all free form content too. They love you on this one. Yes. And people, this is Kenya, okay? Can you tell people they don't know about Africa? Also, a lot of people watch overseas. Mm -hmm. So they don't get your vibe. They don't know okay. women like this are in Kenya. Very stylish. I know. Very Thank stylish. You. Where do you get the drip from? How do you Thank get this you. drip? What you woke up in the morning and put this together? Yeah. That's a real stylish woman right here, man. She real stylish. Good. So you can come style me up. I'm also a little stylish yeah. sometimes, but I need a woman to, you know, dress me up a little bit. So maybe you can come and work okay. with us, be our stylist. Sure, I don't mind. Look at that. Oh my God. This is a new one for you, God, baby. That's one of my favorite Since words. You're Africa. <laughs> Africa <laughs> no, Africa. And also, we, you know, I'm, I'm Liberian, right? Little talk of Liberian, but I've also been living here for seven years. But my business, you see, is filled with Kenyans. So don't ever feel, you can always speak that Kiswahili over here, baby. Yeah. So don't get Kiswahili. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. A little rusty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Get out of here. Uh, I'm, I'm a baby, uh, okay? I'm talking to Waco so, for you. So please, Tapa Daddy, don't kill me too much, okay? Need to fun to watch Kiswahili right now. I'm in school. So give me about five more years. Five more years. Yeah, I've been here for seven, so I need five. My first set was about party. Now I'm actually doing real work. I'm, I got a foundation here also in Kibera too. So we do real work industries and not only digital work. We do, you know, humanitarian and we do lifestyle. And we work with creators like you. So. I'm also an author, so yeah. An author? And yeah, I've published a book. So. Damn. That's a whole story we can tackle right there. <laughs> See, stylist, owners, influencer, right on the street, great vibe. And she's an author. See, I said, tell people, we, we just, it's, I'm a nice person, right? This is Africa though, this is Africa. I'm so you know, whenever I'm working with uh, Shabi, is way famous than <laughs> myself. Despite that I live um, in this locality, I live in Nairobi City. Those these guys are uh, no Shabi more than they know me. This is my producer. Yeah, Let them show me yourself better than. Oh, you want to see yourself? Yeah. So tell the people that. <laughs> The, the guy talked a lot of English. Let's, let's, I remember. Let's, 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 let's. Mama Sha people, they actually supported us. They're on an episode of the Black Lives Matter. Amazing. How, how much are you going to pay us? What? What are you pay you for? You got paid yeah. me, man? I put you on TV. You're famous. You should go around Nairobi and say, I'm you famous. The, you don't want to I pay us. Pay. <laughs> I put you on TV for the world to see you. Damn, you you're not famous. famous. He made you famous. Nobody ever came from the world to <laughs> no, no, no. Hey, okay, okay. That, okay. It's our business. Okay, it's our business. business. Not our business. I'm a network. I'm a global network. I travel to 70 countries around the world. Wow. So, when I'm doing so this is Africa. You know? In time. You meet you, you you meet different kinds of people. There's always that person who wants to be compensated for their time. And you know, you're here to promote them, not to promote yourself. So don't get it twisted. It's live. Yes, exactly. Right, let's the, the lady, the DJ right, was like, Hold on, you know my phone looking so. dirty? Black Zero gonna try to play me. Oh. <laughs> Black Zero better not disrespect you, Black Zero. Okay? I do this for you. <laughs> okay. So, so Black Zero, Amazing. we want to tell the people free flow content. Mm -hmm. Uh, I came here, please go back to uh, previous episodes we do, promotion video, we promoted Demi, um, uh, she has her own business, I told you, great uh, Nigerian restaurant business that she's building here and she still cooks for many people. And I came here to uh, support Gecko and I had to stop and say hello to my uh, Maasai brothers, always, is that right? Do I always show respect? Yeah, man. And this is my barber shop right here. So anytime you come to Africa, before you go do something. Oh, your barber shop up there? That's my barber shop. Oh. But before you, there you go right here. Before you stop somewhere in the neighborhood, just like you see us in Kibera, it's a woman we always have to sing for. Before we get to where we going, you gotta acknowledge people. So he was actually in the episode. So what we doing is, we making sure he looks good in the episode, okay? <laughs> First off, we tried to charge back Lee. I told him, we made him worldwide famous. Yeah, he made him famous. <laughs> so, Kaga, look at this. Right. Look at this Take my Instagram. Something yep. about this place. Can I have your Instagram? Oh, guys are oh, doing big, big vehicles. Big vehicles, expensive vehicles. So, I know. Someone doesn't expect this with Africa. Just look, there is a Jeep behind me. So that's how Africans are living good life. 
big life. So if you in case you have been thinking that Africans live on trees. You see the kind of life Africans are living? Undertaker. Bro, you get inspired by Undertaker? You see some big bugs. You get inspired by Undertaker? Well, not inspired by Undertaker, but I like Undertaker. You like Undertaker? I'll, I'll Undertaker <laughs> Maybe the one inspiring Undertaker. <laughs> Very well. Why did you do this? Yeah. So you see the kind of life in Nairobi? Wow. Maybe you can tell us your name. My name is uh, James. My name is James. James? I work for Ultimate 9 Kenya. Ultimate 9? Yeah. Wow. That might be your organization, right? Wow, I want to see it in more. Yeah, amazing. Everybody, go see Africa. Where do you think he's from? Just guess, just take a guess. From Nairobi? Go ahead, tell, tell your story, bro. We want to walk with you. Tell me more about you. Go ahead. Yo, man, yo, man. You want to my people? Yo, I'm Clovis the Baba. Huh? Yeah, I'm from Burundi, man. Burundi? Yeah, yeah. Wow. Can you tell him? This is my first guy from Burundi. You're the first person I ever met from Burundi. Sure. Bro. First person ever. Yeah. Tell me. Blend in crazy. I didn't even know he was Burundi, bro. I yeah. Tanzania. As a foreigner, what, what's so good about Kenya? About Kenya? Uh, yeah. So in Kenya, yeah. it's okay, it's okay. What's yeah. so good about Kenya? Good. As a most. Mm -hmm. There is just someone who wants to visit Kenya. Can you advise them to visit Kenya? To visit Kenya, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because Kenya is a good country. It's a good country. Yeah, Peaceful. Yeah. Are they racist? I don't know. They are not. Wow. Amazing, bro. Mm -hmm. Thank you. But how long you been Check here? Check out Ghost to Africa. But how long you been in Kenya? That's some how long you been in Kenya, though. How long? Kenya. Yeah. Since 2019. Okay. 2019. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So tell Kenya is about Burundi's so now here. you have a Kenyan citizenship? No, no, no. Right. Why? You should follow. Maybe in November, I will apply it. By November? Yeah. Tell wow. me come work with Go See Africa Black Geo. You need to work with Black Geo and Go See Africa. Yeah, yeah, see you. Wow. <laughs> Reach us out. Okay. Yeah, thank you, brother. Okay. We're yes. going to talk. I promised you to take, uh, to take you around the rich neighborhoods of Nairobi. Nairobi uptown. So, I'm sitting in one of the high end places. Guys, uh, I've parked big vehicles here around here, so I'm the only person here without a vehicle. Literally. <laughs> so I can see from Porsche, Porsche Cayenne uh -huh, to Jeeps, several Audis, Volkswagens, big cars, expensive vehicles, and uh, most important, I'm here. And most important, I'm doing this for you. You know? <laughs> I can do anything for my viewers. I can do anything that uh, will make my viewers happy. And uh, it will hurt me if I came to find you that you don't subscribe to this channel. <laughs> I sacrifice this much, you know? Oh, it's a beautiful place. You see, if you look around, uh, we have some kinds of bikes. Some bikes, yeah. Yeah, cool place, beautiful place. Then with me, you shall be from the Black Geo. Better like and subscribe, Black Geo. Still on a branded tour, Black Geo. Uh, go see Africa. I always say that. I'm always on a branded tour. <laughs> yeah, always on a branded tour. I'm always on a branded tour. Wow. Well, so, some more guys are joining. You can see yeah. some cars. They enter. So. We, we like sitting at the some, somewhere yeah, somewhere high somewhere we can view Brandon to us yeah we can I'm view the Nairobi well there, you know? yeah. and, and we want to say that you know we go to places that we work and relax at so Gecko Cafe we always gotta say shout out to Gecko Cafe Mbazi Road Lavinson Nairobi very known for world travelers and Kenyans um, Kenyans you hear Kenya accent behind us and you might hear a British accent, <laughs> you might hear Nigeria, or you might hear Burundi right over there. That's crazy. Right? <laughs> That's why Gecko Cafe yeah, is very known. All kinds of people here. All kinds of people here. And they're vibing, nobody's beefing. It's one of the best places to come hang out uh, daytime or nighttime. We, we gave a great nighttime video here. But go see Africa Black Jesus. We've been coming here for over 
it's uh, about two, three years, so we know about this yeah. area. It's very nice. Very Even combination. without doing the video, mm -hmm. we are always here. Mm -hmm. Oh, I saw FCM. I remember your the, your production. Wow. What was the, the name? ICM. ICM. Back yeah. in the day, yeah, ICM. That was our um, icon, icon music. That was our emblem. You know, who knows what it? I think other than my brother, I know what he's doing. But other than other guys, I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> but they, <laughs> so, yeah, goes, we have done guys, everything though. this while. And that's what we always say, we, we never know. And that's the funny thing about building a brand, because we, be. we, we, we had, when you build a brand, especially at a younger age, you get, type, you get tattoos on your body. You, we're saying in the rap songs, we go, we're repping this brand forever in life. But it wasn't... Um, it's not. It's not for you. It's not like you. You built it. So when we hear "Go See Africa Black Geo," those are the type of brands going to last for, for life because it was pretty much named after ourselves or our entity, you know, or the business that we're in. So you know, at a younger age, we all thought that that was like the Wu Tang name. That was our big name, our kind of music. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> you know, it was somebody else's vision. So that's yeah. why I said the the, the, um, the stuff that we did, even though we named it Black Geo, Go See Africa. It's more of a broad scope name that everybody can um, be a part of. Now it's Go see us. Africa. We it's not just saying, that's not his real name, people. Yeah. Black Geo. That's yeah. not my real name. But anybody can run our companies. Yeah. Anybody appear on our channels. Exactly. You see that. We're not, we don't, you know, this channel is a group channel. His channel is, I mean, that's his brand. But I can, I can go host on his channel, you know. But even if um, he, he lets me get a lot of uh, camera time on his channel. And everybody. Even his own brother. So, yeah. <laughs> so, so, yeah. When I retire, I want to hand over the channel to someone else, but then it will be... Go see Africa is like a it costume. It will be a, just a channel. The same a, Batman a is not the same platform. Batman, right? So he's just the first, he's just the first uh, Go See Africa. It's going to be another Go See Africa, just like James Bond. Mm -hmm. It's not the same guy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But he still keep that Bond image. So whoever you have after who Go See Africa, who's going to call themselves Go See Africa, mm -hmm. make sure he keeps that same energy. Mm -hmm. All right, so you guys start calling Go See Africa like a suit. <laughs> it's, like a, it's like a suit, like a, a hero suit, you know. In different generations, people gonna wear this suit mm -hmm. of Go See Africa. Go see Africa. Hopefully, Black Geo too. We so just laying the groundwork, like, oh, and then and guys so, in the future I'm, gonna live better I'm, on the Black Geo than us. Yeah, I'm representing Go See Africa. Mm -hmm. We create African business that other people can thrive, especially when it really uh, matches. Mm -hmm. Uh, the equity matches the content that we do then when people really see it and generations start running our businesses you know we, we, we what we do is laying out the groundwork and the script how to run it and then many people gonna take over they already taking over right now we get, you know so we actually want to tell them it's one another guy we already know Machiavelli killed in the black GA he's one of the biggest producers on the black GO but we have another guy who came on the Black Geo, killed it, and we about to go. He's about to take over. These guys are seeing the vision. They realizing like I can go on these networks and be become a star or become a whatever, or, you know, and gain more followers from your own platform. So imagine five, ten years from now when these guys are the legacy people that we're doing. It's gonna be natural when people get out of school or get uh, want to start their platform. They're gonna call. They will first call Go See Africa or Black Geo because they're gonna know what we did for the Machiavellis. How they came to work with us, the Mimi, uh, the Mimis, the Flying Queens, you know, even in DCs, all of them. How they came to work with us, you know, we we doing the same thing for everybody, you know. So what we do, we go see Africa, really laying on the groundwork level, and then when we really get in the ballroom, we'll have like what we know. We, we lay the groundwork without a student, without a, a office building, people. <laughs> we lay the groundwork without the office building, so when we get to the office building, no, I, we know I how say, to run the business. I okay. Say, Africa is my office. Africa is and my tell office. people, yo, so that was a deep thing you just said. Yeah, Africa is And they my asked office. me one time, right? They said, yo, even from here to New York, they see us, a lot of my interviews and a lot of stuff we do is in the streets, right? Yeah. And I tell them, yeah. Like you just said, y'all interviews, oh yeah, that's our office, this is the streets. <laughs> but right beside, in the, in the corner alleyway to a street corner, or whatever, that's the Black Geo Go See Africa's office. Mm -hmm. All right? We don't sit up inside and do TikTok content and, and react to it. Yeah. We, <laughs> react to what's going on in the earth at that, yeah. at that pure time, but where we are. And that's why our content is so unique, um, because 
It comes, it comes from what we do. Mm -hmm. It's not like we're going out there watching somebody else and reacting to somebody else's content. Yeah. It's literally we're creating something for somebody else to react to. So in the future, people will be reacting to what you're doing, bro. Because you're not taking anything. It's not like you're sitting down like, oh, I'm, I'm watching somebody else and I'm about to react to it so I can get a thousand views or three thousand views. Like yeah. our storyline is totally about. Uh, it's like a book. <laughs> it's like a movie. And you said that. And remember, you said that it was at two or nine. Everything we do, it's a movie. Yeah, it's like a movie. It's like a story. It's, like, a it's, like, it's more. You call it a vlog, but it's more like a storyline. Especially right now, we doing branding. But when we all together, we go like tomorrow. When you see we shoot, it's gonna be like a story. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like we are, right now, we doing the branding. When we all when we got the storyline that we about to do. Just like tomorrow, we got a big time artist we work with. It's a story how we shoot. You know. It's hard for us to go do the TikTok content. I don't even know where to start. To go get somebody else's stuff and just react to that shit all the time. Okay? I can't do it. <laughs> I'm more of a journalist, entertainment, and creativity. Yeah. Yo, go see Africa, man. Yeah. That's a, how, you like, how you like that when I was walking to New York City, talking to Miss Brenda, shout out to Miss Brenda who watches us from North Carolina. I'm standing in Nairobi, mm -hmm. and she watches us from North Carolina and says she loves the Black Geo. Yeah. And she, when you hear that voice, that's Miss Brenda. Very beautiful woman. She works hard in North Carolina. She takes care of a lot of people, and she takes her time out of her day to watch us. But they it's crazy um, around the world, people. That motivates us. Mm -hmm. uh, it gives us the reason as to why. Yeah. We need to keep on pushing. You know. Around the world watching. That crazy. gives you the reason to love Africa more than ever before. You know. Yeah. This. Thing we're doing, we are not doing it for reward, but the reward is, a, is, you know, is to war, see everyone appreciating the what we do. The reward is really a portfolio too. The portfolio. Yeah. Portfolio. The portfolio is crazy. Tell mm -hmm. about. Tell yeah, about, it's tell about we, how, now, first started. Because now we came to this place and uh, several guys wanted to do business with us. Yeah. They really wanted to be part of our brand. You know, we have made friends here. At a place we never expected to uh, to make friends at. Whenever you say you tell someone that I showcase Africa to the world and showing the world to Africa, someone will be like, "Oh, so who are these guys?" Yeah. You gotta it confuses someone. You know why? Because we blend in with the people, society. We didn't come here with fancy jewelry on. I tell people, I tell, we said that in the video, in the episode you probably always saw. The most people who do things for me, most people who got things moving in the world, they wear regular shirts like this, people. They're not wearing Gucci shirts. <laughs> They're not wearing fancy boots. They're wearing regular shirts like, like this. Yeah. And they pull up on you like this. So you better be ready for people like this. Regular shirts, they're doing real things in the earth. You feel me? I, I'm looking good. I got some good. You. I'm looking good today. But I'm just saying, regular shirt like a regular t-shirt. That's the people who really make it, make it, shake it, making things move. So when they see us, they're like, uh, these guys just have regular t-shirts on, it, and these guys are really pushing um, the culture. Yeah, we yeah. pushing the culture mm -hmm. from here to around the world. Mm -hmm. And so they're very um, humble themselves, meeting us. The guys over there, my Masai guys, they know us. You yeah. saw the vibe. We got the reception we get. Masai guys are the security people, so yeah, the we're gonna security hire them too. We're gonna is hire them us to the yeah, compound. Yeah. We're gonna hire, and guess what? We promote the these people. Yeah. The Masai people should uh, love us too. We go to Masai land individually. I, I went to Masai land myself. My Samoan people know me out there. I've been to Masai land. This guy works in Masai land. So when we meet these people, we always got something to talk about when we meet them. He thought he was gonna say a Masai. Okay, we can talk about Masai for about ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and he felt so that's why they love it because it's not like he's saying something that's foreign to us. We love your culture. We spend time with your people. You know, we met a Nigerian today, a big Nigerian guy. He might work with us in the future. We know about Nigeria also. We talk about Nigeria. That's that's why they love us. We have something that we can talk about to your culture. We're not just foreign to something. He he meet people from the U.S. He know how to talk about somebody U.S. That's the thing about our company. We always before we get to this country, oh, we've been there already. But when we interact with people on the street, we know how to conversate, relate, bring similarities. So even if, like the people from Romania who watch us, shout out to my people in Romania, Dennis and his wife. Um, they support us also, because we have things to talk about that can relate to them, you know? So like you said, we can relate to people who are not our race, who, are, who is our race. That's a good thing about our business, I'll go see. It's a good thing, man. How does it feel? You can relate to many different races in your business, not just the only Africans. People yeah. from Romania are watching. It's crazy. Yeah. 
people are I would ready say, to get it. Um, starting doing what we do, it made me first learn how to relate with people from different cultures. Before I used to be a very reserved person. I never used to socialize with anyone, but through this I've learned to appreciate the community around me, you know? I've learned that someone in a different um, continent can be your best friend, more than your closest friend, more than the person you think they are ever there for you, more than your yeah, blast sibling. I've met people, uh, close people in the Caribbean and in America, people I never thought that I, can, I could ever meet them. Yeah, you know, you know the mentality has always been being in Africa. I love Kenya. I love um, the community where I come from. But before, I, I never even thought of promoting the entire Africa until I started doing this. Myself in high school, I did history, but I did not take time to. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. So in school, no, no, keep on, keep it on you. Yeah. yeah. I gotta ask you. Mm -hmm. You growing up in Africa. Yeah. What kind of history of Africa was they teaching in school? What kind of history of Africa, particularly Africa? Did they um, teach you about Great Rift Valley, the ancient African cultures, other South Africa, Liberia, other countries? Did, would they teach you other countries okay. in Africa? Um, remember, these books were not written by Africans. Okay. So you they were, have the same problem as America? Yeah. Okay. They were written by people from the West. So they... Yeah. More, most of the, uh, those books, were, they were talking about the, the colonialism, the independence, all that. The role the whites have played, the Britons played in our country. Yeah? Slave, a bit of slave trade. Because they know that we must get that info, information. But it's never really... So they didn't teach you Kenyan history? Kenya history. Did they tell you like Kenya history? No, they they, uh, they only talked about immigration. Yeah, yo, yo, that's breaking news. Yeah, they breaking news. So you telling me there wasn't like in your own country talking about some great leaders in Kenya? They didn't teach that in school. It wasn't that deep. What? If, and, even and when uh, I can tell you, for a matter of yeah. fact, when uh, when I went to Fort Jesus, what I found there was yeah. different from what I studied in the books. Yeah, yeah. We were never told that. Now people need to hear this because they ladies, think you live in Africa and they, in school. We thought they taught, like even in middle school, or high school. They think they're teaching you yeah. about your own African history. So you telling people, seriously, people in America need to see it because we go through the same thing. Mm -hmm. I told you I was in the last era of school in America that would teach you about black leaders. Yeah. Even to Africa, mm -hmm. you know, you will learn that outside of you know, what your parents taught. Yeah. But you telling people that even a man who went to school, grew up in Africa, born in Africa, yeah, they didn't teach you your own Kenya history or just African history? Um, it wasn't that day. In school what? I mean, you're what, what, what now is, is uh, content creators, whatever you're showcasing is, at the moment, yeah. it's quite different from what we have been learning before. Yeah. It's quite different from um, what the media has been showing out there. Because now, for me, no one limits me to film what I'm filming, you know? It's different. The media will always have limits. Still, our governments um, colon, are still uh, we call it neo -colon neo colonialism. Yeah, yeah. colonialism. They are still colonized That's what by. That's you explained it to us that we uh, America's dealing with Jim Crow and the civil rights. You, at the same time, yeah. Kenya was dealing with the same thing. That's why he said when they was miseducating the blacks in America, they were miseducating the, uh, the black people in Kenya the same way. Yeah. British, can you explain to people that uh, the British colonialized? Uh, Kenya. So it was the same thing had America got the blacks exactly. in America got colonialized. Same thing in Africa. Yeah. So but they, I was surprised. Uh, um, one of the biggest guys, I think, uh, is, the, is, the, is the king, or the, the husband to the <laughs> to the queen. Yeah. Okay. That guy was in Kenya. Okay. Guy with the queen. They, they were um, the, the prince, okay. the prince of Britain. Okay. He was in Kenya, and the attention. Our government was giving that guy like he's a father, like he was a god. god yeah, he's that important. <laughs> <laughs> we used to um, 
giving uh, red carpet privileges. Yeah. Something to say in some places whereby even the president himself is not getting red carpet privileges. This guy came to Kenya, he visited all national parks. He visited uh, all important places in Kenya, meaning they are still ma managing Kenya, yeah. even oh, yeah. uh, in, the, in, in, in the absence. Yes, yes. Yeah? What well, people don't know that the, the British government, the Crown, not just Kenya people, they own the banking system of these countries. So if you actually go back, no matter what this bank, Kenya bank says, if you look at the descriptions and say who really runs this bank, it's going to say the, the, the Royal Bank. You know what the Royal Bank is? Yeah, is the, yeah the British the Bank. Britain. From Jamaica, the Kenya, all these places, they run the banking system. So their bank, your bank is just their name in the country. Mm -hmm. Who they send that money back to, like the real undertone line. Yeah, they own a lot of these banking systems in these countries. Yeah. Jamaica, Kenya, these places, they still run these banking systems, mm -hmm. you know? So the families are getting free money. I mean, that's the colonial rule, but people are still paying. Haiti still have to pay France. How did I say that? Yeah, yeah. They still have to pay. France. Yeah, people are still thinking like, oh, you get uh, <laughs> Independence Day. Ain't no independence. I'm yeah. still paying these people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mm -hmm. You know, we still pay. So yeah, it's a it's a manipulation when they talk about that. Uh, you yeah, run your own country because technically we don't run our own country. We don't run our own businesses. You know, I really don't. don't we don't run our own really business. You know, like the, so yeah, they, they they don't treat us right. I mean, but that's what happens when you come uh, when you start learning more outside the books. We want to bring it back to what he said. I'm asking him. He was born in Africa. Went to school. I'm thinking. The first place he gonna learn about Kenyan history is right here in Kenya. He said, no, I probably learn more on YouTube than in school. That's crazy. Because in, in America, what man kind of told you, there's a generation nowadays that don't know anything about great leaders because it's not their fault. The, 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 the government systems have made it and written it in the law that they can regulate what they want to teach the kids now. You know, they don't have to tell the kids about slavery. We don't have to tell the kids about Malcolm X. We don't have to tell the kids about Kwame Nkrumah and, and uh, yeah, Patricia Moore. You tell them about Kwame Nkrumah. No, they don't have to tell. They tell them about animals and some of them, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> regular president Obama. That's it. Yeah, yeah, you skip yeah. everything to Obama. Oh, I, uh -huh. Hold on, hold on. I'm, I was born in 1989, okay? You do your calculation how old I am. But guess what? Life did not start when I was born, right? Life been here, <laughs> okay? So mm -hmm. but in the history books, when we go to school, they tell you like life just started. In 1955. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my, my grandmother was born in 1920s, okay? My, my parents were born in 1950s. Okay, but life been started years ago, but they only want to tell you what they want to tell you. And a lot of us around the world, we're learning things after we leave school. Trust me, the Black Jill was here because not for school people. <laughs> school ain't got nothing to do with all oh, the Black Jill was in Kenya or why the Black Jill got to travel around the world. That was a whole other business that got nothing to do with learning. That's the funny thing. I hope another business that had nothing to do with learning that brought me around the world to learn about the world. It's crazy, right? But I went with the school to learn about these places and we just learn about the places. Okay, cool. You don't even get the full story. I learned more about Kenya, drop it in Kenya. You feel know I me? Mean? I already knew about Kenya. You understand about me in Kenya, right? I already knew I already knew I was gonna come to Kenya ten years before I got to Kenya. You know why? Because I had, I already knew about Kenya. Oh, you already knew Kenya? I, I have family who live here. I told you I have cousins who were born here. I have ancestors who live. One of my uncles was an ambassador here oh, in this country. Oh, he knew Jomo Kenyatta. I don't want to tell a lot of my business. Yeah, I have ancestors who were born here in Kenya. I already knew I was going to do it. I had friends who visited Kenya who came back to me before I came to Kenya. It was like, yo, the same vibe I give you about Kenya, I know about that vibe already. My cousin spent time here. Five years before I came here, my cousin was here. Mm -hmm. Bro, when he came back. Oh, I know, I know your uncle by the Chabma. Huh? No, 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 but uh, Nathan Eastman, Nathan, but uh, what you call him? But I'm just saying in general, my cousin who came here, mm -hmm. he gave the same vibe I give people when I talk about Kenya to, mm -hmm. to me. He came out to Kenya about a month later. He was in Kenya for like two, three months. By the time he came out of Kenya, uh, from Kenya, he spoke like, bro, he was speaking Kenya like crazy. He was screaming like, oh my God, oh, no, no, no. Kenya, Kenya, Kenya. <laughs> I looked at him like, yo, is Kenya that lit? He like, bro, oh my God, I already knew. I was gonna come to Kenya. You feel me? That's how we. That's how, that's the image that we get people. Now everybody, they don't know. They don't know about this. It's a, it's a little different feeling. Um, they won't tell you about. Uh, uh, you gotta have that love first. You know, it's experience.
know, so that's what we're giving people here. It's more experience first before we get there because we actually research these places. We want to know about these places. And, and we're not going to just jump and say, oh, I'm just going to Trinity. This man, before he get to Trinity, he going to know some things about Trinity. He going to know what to deal with a little bit. You feel me? Mm -hmm. we, we're, 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 we're actually um, explorers. You feel me? We're travelers, but we're explorers also. When, when it comes to being explorer, you want to learn about places. You know what I'm saying? That's the thing that we like to do. So you see even a lot of our videos I do myself, I do a lot of write, writing, write a lot of notes. Go see African Note. You know my trusty uh, green, black geo notebook. Yeah, I'll yeah, just go yeah, on the video. Yeah. When I do my hidden history series, I'm up till three in the morning writing notes. <laughs> three, four morning notes. So I, it's, I'm writing a script. People don't know, and I'm writing notes of real history so I don't just go in there and act like I know everything. You know what I'm saying? Because I want to know about it. I'm in my thirties still learning, learning things. You can, it's never a limit to learn something. I don't, trust me, bro. It's people older than me. I'm not listening to them. They lost, man. So, and I learned, it's younger people who teach me things. So that's how I tell people. Um, I learned from the youngest person. It's six year olds I work with, and they teach me. Guess what? Guess who's some of my biggest teachers in Kiswahili? Five and six year old people. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. I be saying something, they, uh, 60 year old correct me. I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I don't say that. I don't be like, oh, you 60 year old, you can't take. No. 60 year old teach me about stuff. A 10 year old teach me about something. A 20 year old, a Machiavelli starts teach me about something. I go see Africa. They're not even an older person. Mm -hmm. There's no limit. Everybody are knowledgeable people. Like, so guess what? The only people who know about the stuff that the young people not knowing about, go back and teach them about it. Because right now it's an error that even he said it. Kenyans don't even know that the oldest person ever found is here. The oldest person, Homo sapiens sapiens, is no, here. That, that's right. Um, they uh, they have talked about those. Um, uh, oh, they, so they, they explain that to about you. The, 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 how, how the first man was found in Kenya. Okay. Um, that the, we have Kerio Valley, the Sunday Gorge, what all that, but there is more that's hidden. You know, the writers of the books, the authors, <laughs> only wrote what favored them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, some species ne never even remained in Kenya. They were taken, they, they, were, they were exported to their country, you know, the colonizers. Yes. Yeah. So, so, what year did they start teaching you? Like, what year? Like, in the history books, did they start like 1920? Did they go back in the 1800s? 1700s, 1600s. Did they go back in those years, or they started like only 1920 something? What year? What year were you learning from? Were you learning from um, the dark ages, 1300s? You were learning no, from those they, ages. Uh, they always have newer versions, so we were learning the newer versions. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So. And I saw a Black Geo answer some business texts. This is a branded video today, okay? So you can sit here and watch me text. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Journalism, entertainment, creativity, people. But go ahead, yeah. What year did they start? Like, what year were they teaching you for? Yeah. Was it like... But they, every... After every, I think, after three, four years, they always had uh, new versions of books. Yeah. Meaning, they edited something out. There is something they never wanted you to see. Yeah. Yeah? What? Oh, so it was like a... Um, they worked... Taking some things out so you won't love yeah, skipping yeah, some things. Yeah, exactly. See? They used to have new options. Did they explain about, because myself, I, oh my God, I did a great research one time about Zanzibar. How, I, I'm, I'm sorry, Black um, Channel, that I can't remember the guy's name. I'm drinking right now. But the liberation of Zanzibar was from a young um, Black uh, Tanzanian. He was a young man. Mm -hmm. did, did they teach you all the history about Zanzibar? How the sheiks used to run Zanzibar? How the sheiks used to run Mombasa? The sheiks. They, they're the ones who, who used to run these areas. Uh, you know, the, the coast. Sultan? Yeah, the Sultans. The Sultan, they, they, they teach yeah. about the Sultans. Uh, um, the by the way, if you go to Fort Jesus, mm -hmm. I want you to, in November, we're going to Fort Jesus, yeah? I will be back in Mombasa, people. Yeah. For, we do a lot of Mombasa content. Because I go to Mombasa also, but Ghosty Alvarez is the ambassador of Mombasa. Yeah. So he takes over a lot of Mombasa videos. So you learn that there are some uh, war equipment mm -hmm. the Sultan took from Zanzibar okay. and placed them in. Uh, in Fort Jesus. Okay. Yeah. Did you, did you read about the lib liberation? Did you explain about the liberation of the people? Did? Liberation? Yeah. I really can't remember where. Okay. But I. But I, 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 you I, saw you, you were there with the dungeons and all that too. Right? You got to see the, the dungeons and the, the, the dungeons, all the dungeons areas and all the ancient areas of the old town. Oh, um, ancient. 
Oh, that shit ain't It was like prison. Yeah, I mean, it, was, it was a prison. You was at. It was like a prison or something like that, right? In Zanzibar? Yeah. No, no, no. In, in Mombasa. In Mombasa. Yeah, they used to call the the prison was the Sultan. Yeah, Sultan. Yeah, yeah. The Sultan. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sultan. And he used to re, to reside in oh, for Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm yeah. Yeah. So he, he what he's saying is he's always at some ancient areas. You're probably learning after school. So that's, that's the print meaning of the video. Yeah. A lot of stuff that we, we in school, we learn, we learn, a lot of things that we know nowadays, we learned after school. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. But then whatever we learned after school is much more than mm -hmm. what you used to learn then. Mm -hmm. So guys are still joining here there and um, my battery is running low. So I need to end the video from this point. So my name is Gossi Africa. I'm a travel and a YouTuber from Kenya and with me was always Shabby from the Black Zero. Better like and subscribe. That is my saying, okay? We sit out here, we do great content for you guys, and we always got extra episodes next. On another episode. Another episode. Another episode. On the Black Zero. Go see Africa. You already? Goodbye.